So a quick reminder, this video is part of a series of videos I did with the Automotive Video Association out in Oregon. It was part of the AVA Sports Car and SUV of the Year Awards. Much fun was had. Okay, so the first car I'm in today is the Bullet Mustang, which is, I picked this car up from the airport. Um, and I'm super pleased that this is the first car. This is the cheapest car I'm driving today by a significant margin, but I'm actually really excited to drive this. You know, um, <laughs> you know, it's a dark green car with a manual transmission and some deviated stitching. <laughs> what could go wrong? Uh, this is also the car that my buddy Matt Moran has got, although his um, doesn't have these seats, these Recaro seats, which uh, don't allow you to have the, the, the heated seats and the cooling seats, but they are super cozy. And of course, we've got a V8. It's all good. It's all good. I popped it into sport mode. I've connected my phone to Apple CarPlay. I have to say the Apple CarPlay seems to work a little better in the Ford than it does in my Porsche. Although it's when I went to the maps, uh, it glitched out. Like it can't find where we are on the maps on the, uh, on the display here, but the maps on my phone work just fine. So maybe not perfect, but seems to work fine. Every time you get into a car that has Apple CarPlay, it just makes life so much easier. And of course, we've got the uh, sort of golf ball uh, gear selector, which, you know, the gears are just so nice and clunky, short throw, it's pretty sweet. But on to the exciting stuff, the engine. Everyone's excited to drive the McLaren today, uh, of course, because it's an, a super exotic, but you're not going to be able to get anywhere near tw even 20% of its performance, whereas I'm really going to be able to open up the uh, Mustang and see how it goes. And what I've noticed, it's interesting about this engine, there's all the powers up the top. It's not a it's not a lazy V8 like the good old days. If you're on a lazy V8, then you should get the Camaro or one of the Dodgers. This engine actually struggles a little bit low down. Like I'm in fourth gear now, and I'll come to this corner, I'll change back down to third. So here we are, 2,000 RPM in third gear. Put my foot down. It's picking up, but it's not until you start getting it into the 5,000 RPM, then you start feeling that torque kick in so yeah uh, you have to rev this thing in order to get the most out of the engine then it rockets along and goes right up to seven and a half thousand and the power that that torque is right up there five to seven and a half thousand is where you really feel the torque quite an interesting engine and sounds awesome so the bullet pack, which is what this is, is actually not bad value for money. It's, I believe, if you have the performance pack and all the options you get with the bullet, you pay no more for having the bullet, so you might as well get the bullet. Obviously, if you like a dark green car, which I do. I might turn around just here and I'll uh, pop a camera outside and we'll see if we can capture some of this, this glorious V8. What do you think, William? Okay, let's hear a little bit of that engine sound. Yeah! Actually, since we're here, I'm going to test how fast each one of these performance cars goes in reverse. <laughs> well, that's pretty fast. You know, it is kind of a fun car to drive, if for no other reason than just to listen to that soundtrack. But they've made an effort as well. You know, this new digital dash is pretty cool here. Let me change the modes for you. So here we go. So here we go. Start in normal mode. So it looks like a normal dashboard very easy to read and then I hold the button and we'll go to sport mode which is what I was in before which moves that uh, tack across the top which is pretty cool I think I drive it in that in this configuration the most and then on to track mode which just enlarges the numbers and puts the tack right across the top 
That's pretty cool. Do I know, notice much of a difference with the dampeners and so forth? This one's got the, uh, the special ride package on it and I do feel it stiffen up from normal mode. But I don't feel a lot of difference in the throttle response. I would have thought it was more on and off when it was in these modes, these track modes, but I guess maybe I'm just missing it. And finally there's the uh, wet and snow mode. Once again, I don't, <laughs> I don't notice too much of a difference. Normally in the wet and snow modes, it's a, more of a gear ratio thing on an automatic car where it holds a high gear all of the time. Anyway, we'll put it back into uh, Sport Plus mode for now. And, and across to the centre gauge, we have an oil pressure gauge, very nice, and strangely, a vacuum gauge. What does a vacuum gauge tell you? Maybe that you've got a manifold leak? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it just reminds you where your foot is on the accelerator. So with my foot off, it's showing 25, whatever those things are. And if I put my foot all the way to the floor, it goes straight to zero, whatever those things are. Very handy. And otherwise, around the, around the interior, you get a lot of little special touches, the, the bullet stuff everywhere, even on the door sills. Uh, and the dark green stitching, which I don't know, you really probably don't notice unless you're looking for it. Uh, you get the embossed Recaro seats if you, if you get this option. But yeah, you know, I love a bit of uh, deviated stitching, but on this car, it's nice on the seats uh, and on the edges, but I find it's a little odd that they've got deviated stitching in the rubber. <laughs> I guess it looks nice, but yeah, it's strange that the stitching rubber. But as a driving experience, I've got to say it's fun. Obviously a big part of that is this manual transmission. Get out on these Oregon roads. Chop down a gear. And let it rip. And that's what's great about these modern pony cars, is that they can actually take a corner. Okay, look who I've got in the car with me, Mr. Bullet Mustang himself. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> so how are you loving this beast? Oh, I love mine. I have about 1,300 miles on it so far, and uh, yeah, I just wish I had more time to drive it. That's the yeah, thing. yeah. It's just, it's They've done a lovely job, huh? Yeah, yeah, what do you think of it? I love it. I mean, I, I was just saying that I'm glad that this is the first car I'm driving today because this is by far the cheapest of the cars that we're driving. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't make it any less, you know, it's still a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but certainly, it's it's interesting how there's really not a lot of power for such a big engine down low, but once you, once you get up into that rev range, higher rev range, you start really picking up and the sound is just glorious, isn't yeah, it? isn't it? I love it. So is, do you have any complaints with it so far? Not really. I mean, you know, it would be nice to have more power down low. That's yeah. one thing that, yeah. you know, the Challenger and Camaro both have. Is yeah. These Coyote motors never really had tons of torque. Yeah. And now everyone has a turbocharger in their cars, and so everyone gets used to having all that low down torque. Yeah. So it's strange not to have it. But I really love this because you, yeah. you have to ring it out. You have yeah. to take it to red line, and I love that about it because it just gives you an excuse to, you know, drive it a little bit harder. I think, yeah, that's right. Others. And that sound. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Did you uh, try all the different uh, exhaust modes and stuff? Yeah, I've been fiddling around with the modes. You know, we, we, the, the funny thing about this, this event is you get such a short period of time. Yeah. It, it's more of a taste of the cars than a, than a real car review, isn't right, it? Right, yeah. But I, I, I could only just really notice a little bit of difference with the steering modes. Yeah. Um, but the, the digital dash is so cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's such it. a big improvement. Yeah. And I mean, I wasn't crazy about it at first. I was like, oh, I probably like, I just like did, you know, normal analog gauges because I'm a traditionalist. Yeah. But now that I've had them in mind, I just, I really started to love them more and more. It's just yeah. it's so cool. And there is more information than you get with the analog gauges. So I do like that about it too. And you got the regular seats, didn't you? Not yeah. these Recaros. So there's really only three options. The um, the yeah. electronics package, these seats, and... Magna ride suspension. That's right, the suspension. Yeah. 
Yeah, so this has all three. Mine doesn't have the Recaros. And, uh, you know, I mean, these Recaros are, like, you know, really comfortable and... Yeah, that's snug, huh? Yeah, nice big bolsters, but, you know, you lose the heating and cooling functions. You, use the, yeah. you lose the memory and power seat functions. Yeah. And for a daily driver, you know, especially the heating and cooling, I didn't want to miss out on. And you have to pay extra. So you pay, you know, like $1,600 and you lose oh. all these functionalities. Yeah. <laughs> that you otherwise get for free. But otherwise, the, the bullet package is almost value for money. If you're wanting to get all of the bits and pieces in here, it's the same as a GT, really, isn't it, with yeah. these options? Yeah, yeah. It's actually, I think, about $300 cheaper if you get all the same stuff on a performance pack level one GT. So it just depends. I mean, not everyone wants, you know, the digital gauges and right. all the toys and stuff. But if you do, and you can find one of these at MSRP, uh, you know, you can get one for about the same. So it's, it's impressive. Yeah. I think they priced it well. So is there anything you're disappointed in about this car? Honestly, no. Yeah. I mean, you know, the only thing that every once in a while, I'm like, I wish maybe the gearing was a little shorter. You know, oh, okay. Gearing is tall, and I'm, you know, it'd be t it's kind of tempting to put 409s in the back instead of the 373s this has, but that's like really the only thing. Yeah, it's a nice package, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's cool that they brought this along today. Um, as a comparison, you know, the, the, the driving experience isn't that much less than a lot of the other cars we're going to drive today. It's just as much fun. Obviously, it's not as fast um, as some of the cars we're driving, but, you know, these days, cars are getting so fast. Like, you've just come out of the M5. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> unless you're on an autobahn, it's hard to use the power that that thing has. It's yeah. incredible. It's hmm? a struggle. I mean, even this, you know, I keep wanting to wind it out. And second yeah. gear, you top out second gear, you're already doing like 70 miles an hour or yeah. something. So yeah. it's just like, it's a little, uh, a little frustrating sometimes because you want to just, you know, go crazy and you can't sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder how many people buying this, I mean, people obviously want it for the bullet package, but, you know, that movie is from the 70s, isn't it? Or is 60s. It? 60s. 68, yeah. yeah, so there's not many people, younger people, that would even know what this is all about, right? Yeah. You would think, but it's kind of amazing how bullet, it seems to attract people from all ages. And there's yeah. a lot of people my age that are like, oh, my dad showed it to me as a kid. I grew up watching it. Yeah. And so they kind of have a similar connection to it, like some of the older guys too, which is kind of cool because it's... It's this movie that, you know, it's become a cult classic yeah. and it lives on, uh, you know. But I love the color. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big it's... dark green fanboy anyway, but <laughs> this is a beautiful color. And yeah. you've had 16 green Mustangs <laughs> now. Just about, yeah. yeah. I've lost count. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, that's my fourth one. But I really like, yeah, you know, it's not exactly the same as like the movie car yeah. or anything. But, you know, it's got metallic pop to it and it has some different, you know, when it's direct sunlight, it really jumps out at you. But, you know, whenever it's cloudy, you can almost mistake it for a gray or a black car. Um, so it has a little bit of extra dimension to it, I think, than your average even greens usually do. I think it's cool that I'm taking my life in my own hands riding in a Mustang with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some natural disaster could happen at any second. Right, I know. <laughs> Trees falling, <laughs> yeah. motorcyclists. Yeah. And then you also have to be uh, watching out for all the crowds because, you know... Uh, oh, it's, well, yeah. It's amazing it? how you step on the gas and before <laughs> you know it, you're on a sidewalk. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> I was just saying to the audience that I am so tempted to go and crash into a crowd, but yeah. there's just not enough of crowds around here. <laughs> Is this our resort? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, very cool, Matt. Thanks for coming along for a ride. Absolutely. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, very impressed with this little car. And one more thing friends, don't use a Gorilla to dry your car, they're not very absorbent. Use a rapid dry towel, they are amazing. Available in my store now.